Hey everybody, Mark Ignisi here for Gibson TV. Today, I'm on West 34th Street in Manhattan, on my way to check out one of the nation's oldest guitar stores. Founded in 1924, Sam Ash Music has grown into a chain of 44 stores in 16 states across the country. But it all started right here in New York City. And 98 years after first opening its doors, it's still a family-run operation. Let's go check out the music industry icon that is Sam Ash Music. I'm here now with Sam Ash, COO, my buddy Sammy Ash. Thanks for having me today. Oh man, thanks for coming out. This uh, store is insane. I mean, you guys have some big stores, but we're in Manhattan, and this place is like sprawling. It's a good size. Yeah, it's and spacious. You, you know, there's warehouses downstairs, there's a drum warehouse, a guitar warehouse, all of that, so the store can look right and tight. No, I mean, this is far more than a guitar store. What what all do you guys specialize at Sam Ash Music? Well, we'd like to think we specialize in everything. Our Brass and Winds buyer doesn't look at anything else. Our drum buyer, our accessories. We have two different accessories buyers. Guitar buyer. We look at this, we're a musical instrument store. We sold saxophones before we sold guitars. Yeah. We sold sheet music before we sold drums. The store is set up in departments because you know the brass and winds people don't really have any need or interest <laughs> and so on and so forth. So we have a drum department, a bass department, brass and winds. We separate acoustics because it has to be in a humidified condition. Yeah. We separate our expensive guitars in the Guitars of Distinction room. A lot of people don't know we owned Manny's for the last 15 years of its existence. And this yeah. was the demo guitar. Every single guitar player played this, because you couldn't play a, a good guitar, you had to play a demo. <laughs> so Hendrix played it, Clapton played it, every single musician that came through 48th Street at one time. If you wanted to try an amp and you wanted to try an effect at Manny's, this is what you played. On the front door, right under the Sam Ash name, it says come and play. It sure does, come and You're play. You're kind of running operations in this store. What? What does come and play mean? What, what is that experience when someone walks in here? Come and play is exactly what it sounds like, where you come in, you see an instrument, you're allowed to take it off the wall, and you're allowed to play it. You work for your dad. What's it like to, to come to work and have multiple family members in the building every single day? Um, so there is a lot I could say, but no, I'm kidding. My dad's a pretty cool guy. A drummer doesn't want to talk to a guitar player about sticks. Yeah. You know, it's just uh, like rolling sticks. No, I know strings. So drummer talks to a drummer, a drum expert. And you know, there's not a lot of high turnover. A lot of the people who've been working in this store worked on 48th Street for years. So they're seasoned people and they know how to talk about gear and they know how to talk to people, which is pretty much an art. 98 years ago, this got started in your family. Tell me a little bit about the history of Sam Ash music. My grandfather was a decent violinist, but a great personality. So he had the Sam Ash Society Club Orchestra, and they would play all the various parties in, in Brooklyn. Then this thing called the Depression hit, and suddenly uh, people aren't having parties anymore. So my grandmother wanted a family and a steady income, so the true, it, the real story was she did pawn her ring and they opened the first store on Saratoga Avenue in Brooklyn. It's, it's a parking lot now. They started the business, uh, my father came in, uh, my uncle came in. They started before the war and they both were in World War II. My father was in the Battle of the Bulge. Really? Uh, yeah, if you ever saw the movie, it was pretty intense. Yeah. So the two of them had this kernel of something bigger. Records were, were coming out of phase, radios were coming in, and we weren't in the radio business, so they started to do more and more musical instruments. Guitar at that time was... Not a popular no. thing yet. So we were there really, really early. If you wanted a Defender, you went to Manny's. If you wanted a Gibson, you either went to Eddie Bell or Sam Ash Music. 
We were fortunate to be with Gibson at the right time and just grew with them over the years. And even within departments, we have departments. You know, bluegrass, classic, and of course, our lovely Gibsons, oh. which I'm sorry to say, we sell more than we get. Still got that Elvis Dove though. Man, that's a nice guitar. God, I love those. Looks good yeah, in the black. Uh, and I'm so happy that you guys are increasing production on acoustics because it's needed. You're yeah. making a great guitar, and now you're gonna make them for everybody. Yeah. Our history is pretty, pretty deep. When Wu-Tang started getting Sorry. things together, they came to us for the gear. I really dig musicians. I, no. I wish I could call myself one. But I'm a really good collector. Yeah, I'm excellent. a much better collector than I am excellent. a player, I'll tell you that. I gotta tell you. I, I collect good. Yeah, me too. That's about all I'm doing these days. I mean, you've been doing and around this your whole entire life. Oh, yeah. What, uh, what gets you excited? You still get excited when that box shows up and you unbox oh, yeah. something? Is when we open a store, I like to go there and knock off a whole lot of guitars. And I still, you know, I'm still a kid in the candy store when it comes to guitars and gear. I'm not an amp guy. Yeah, they take up I'm a lot of I'm not an space. effects guy like my son Ben, but yeah. I am a guitar guy. Yeah. Well, in case you get lost, because the store goes that way, that way, that way, that way, you can come here and I'm looking for Gibson. Okay, you'll yeah. find it. It's New York City. Uh, the subway system is both famous and infamous. Sam Ash Music turns 100 years old in a couple years. In a couple years. What's it like to be part of the fourth generation of Ashes keeping this business alive? It is wild. It is absolutely wild. It's cool to be part of any kind of milestone, but for me to be part of not only just, oh, I'm working for a company that's making it to their 100th year, it's my family's company that's making it to 100, and I hope it goes for 200, 300 years for all I know. There is an immense amount of pride in that, and I think when we hit that number, a lot of people who may have not even known about us, whether they're in the industry or not, are suddenly gonna wake up and go, oh wow, they must be doing something right. How proud are you to, to be a part of a legacy that your grandfather started almost 100 years ago? Not as proud as my father. Right. I am super proud, but my father had three sons that didn't screw up a business. He's got uh, five grandsons in the business as, as their gig. No. You know, not as a part-time thing. And for him, you know, he just revels in this. But am I proud? Yes. I've worked for 50 years. I didn't just exist. I, I, I'm, I'm really freaking old school. Yeah. Um, I named the Tube Screamer. I mean, I'm old school. That's the true story. Uh, you know, I've been working with Gibsons since I'm a teenager. And it's just a very natural thing for me. You know, my Gibson collection is now up, like I said, about over 40 instruments. And as you said, it's a good start. It's a good start. There's still well, some holes, I'm, I'm sure. I'm not done. My mother, for the longest time until she retired about seven years ago, she passed last year, was the head of the sheet music department for the chain. And uh, one of the more powerful sheet music departments that existed. Uh, she designed what is the current music store, books and music, which have been followed and copied by virtually every other dealer out there. Uh, that's another thing about our family, is we had a really, really strong woman presence. My grandmother was a rock, yeah. and she worked until her 80s. My mom was a rock, and she had the respect of everybody because she worked it, she earned it. There's a lot of pride on how we display ourselves, how we present ourselves. And, you know, that was something. Now, I never met my grandfather. He passed away in 1956, which is why I'm Sam. Yeah. In the Jewish tradition, you pass on a letter or whatever to the next generation. I just happened to have been lucky. At, at first, it was a curse, I gotta tell you. Growing up, Sammy Ash really wasn't pleasant. Uh, I learned to... You grew into it. I grew into it. Yeah. I went from Sam to Sammy and I have what you can see here today. I still talk to my father every day. And he wants to know how's this going and how's that going. He likes to stay in it. 
my brothers. This is what we do. Like I said earlier, this is what we do. When it's time for you to hang it up and uh, enjoy retirement, you feel pretty good about the next generation of the Ash family carrying this thing to the next uh, the next place. Well, they're going to have a choice of uh, staying with the company or. When I retire, I'm opening a guitar store. I don't know what else to do. You know, I have it all planned in my head. I'll be only open five days a week, 12 to five, maybe. And that's it. And just hopefully nobody shows up during the day. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled that they want to do it. I am thrilled that they can do it. I mean, you know, these guys are really talented. I am proud of what the people, the human beings they've become. I am proud of their contribution to this company, and I think they're going to be awesome. To find the Sam Ash location nearest you, or to see their full inventory of guitars, check them out online at samash.com. That does it for me. I'm Mark Agnesi from Gibson TV. I'll see you guys again next time at another iconic music destination on the next episode of The Scene.